Hey everyone and welcome to another XIM tutorial. Today I want to show you a method with which you can optimize your key bindings to become a better player. Most people start with video games at a pretty early age and usually don't have the knowledge or spend enough time to find a good keyboard layout. They may even just play with the default keyboard bindings of their favorite game. They start to get used to a layout and over the years will continue to stick to it without ever spending any thoughts on how to improve or optimize it. So the chances are fairly high that there is room for improvement and in the following video I will show you a method with which you can do exactly that. So the chances are fairly high that there is room for improvement and in the following video I will show you a method with which you can do exactly that. Next to the optimization of your keyboard bindings I will also show you some examples for bad keyboard layouts that result in game conflicts. That way you can better judge if your current layout is limiting your game performance and if adjustments are required. For the tutorial I will use the following keyboard picture. The first step is to classify the different keys depending on how important and accessible they are. I will use three different classes for that and each class will represent a type of game action that you ideally want to assign to it. The first class is for the walking keys. Most people use WASD for walking because of the great variety of different keys around the WASD block. While you can of course use other walking keys as well, the WASD block pretty much has no downsides, plus most people are already familiar with it. The main idea of using WASD is to keep most if not all three fingers permanently on those four keys. Any additional key can either be pressed with one of the remaining two fingers or by shifting one of the three walking key fingers to a different key. Ideally all three fingers will permanently rest on the WASD keys and there should not be a single moment in which more than one walking key finger is lifted to activate a different key. Only that way you will have the maximum control over your character and your actions. If you are unsure about your own layout matching those rules then just follow this guide as it will automatically fulfill those rules. The second class is for keys that you assign to game actions that are either not time critical or don't require any movement freedom when executed. Those keys are usually the direct neighbors of the WASD block and they all share the same constraint which is that they can only be pressed with one of the three fingers that you normally use for walking. That may not sound important but it actually has a huge impact on your game. Consider the following example. In the PC version of Overwatch the default keyboard key to activate the ultimate of a hero is Q. Now Q belongs to the second class which means that its activation will limit your movement freedom. Let's take the Overwatch character Reinhardt for example. His ultimate ability is called Shatter and will basically stun all enemies right in front of him. Since he doesn't have any long range attacks his close range movement and the timing of his ultimate require even more attention. Now if you were to use Q as an ultimate you could never strafe to the left and activate your ultimate at the same time. Try it on your keyboard, press A while also trying to activate Q. Unless I want to break my fingers there's just no way to comfortably pull this off. But if I use a more accessible button from the third key class I can do it without any problems. Just think about it from the enemy's perspective. As soon as they see a Reinhardt strafing to his left they can almost be sure that he will not activate a shatter. That's an unnecessary advantage that you give to the opponent's team. Also all of the second class keys automatically have a higher activation time since you can only activate them with one of your walking key fingers. You first have to lift the walking key finger and then reposition it and that process of course takes some time. It's just not possible to permanently rest a finger on such a key to instantly activate it. Therefore the second class keys should only be bound to in-game actions that either aren't time sensitive or don't require full character maneuverability during the execution. Examples for game actions for the second key class are the scoreboard, game menu or the inventory option. Even actions such as reload or interaction can be part of this key class. Reloading is usually used after a combat has ended and you manage to get to a safe place, so it doesn't really require a time critical activation or movement freedom. The same applies to the interaction key with which you normally open doors or utilize items. In some games even the melee action can be assigned to the second class. The third class is for keys that you can press while keeping your three fingers on the WASD keys. They should be used for time critical actions that may also require full movement freedom. So third class keys can basically be used while walking into any direction and they are activated with your thumb or your pinky finger. The keys for this class are the most valuable ones on the keyboard and should not be wasted for in-game actions that can also be handled by the second class. A great example is the spacebar key. I mean have you ever wondered why the spacebar is the most common jump key? It's mainly because you can press the spacebar while also pressing down any of the four walking keys. 
just imagine not being able to jump into a certain direction because your keyboard bindings won't allow you to do that. Let's say you bound jump to E and you now want to jump to the right. Pressing E and D at the same time to pull this off just isn't possible and limiting your jump directions would rather be stupid, right? The same can be said about the left control key, which usually is assigned to the crouch action. Once again you want to be able to crouch walk into any direction. Another example is the following. A lot of games use the tabulator key to bring up the scoreboard or the game stats. And let's be honest, that's by all means not a time critical action. So you basically waste one of the best keyboard keys for a rather meaningless in-game action that can also be handled by the second class. The last example I want to bring up is about the left alt key. It's one of the most unused keys on the keyboard, yet it easily is one of the best and most accessible keys out of all third class keys. It can comfortably be pressed with a thumb and is for example a great pick for the sprint key. Although jumping is usually done with a spacebar, so another key that you activate with your thumb, there's hardly any reason to press both jumping and sprinting at the same time. Therefore, there's no game conflict to be expected when having both actions right next to each other. Of course, you can also use left alt for different actions. So if you haven't considered to use the left alt key so far, then you should definitely consider to do that now. Typical game actions that should be bound to keys of the third class are the jump, crouch or ability keys such as the ultimate ability from before. Depending on the game you play, there might be more or less actions that should be bound to the third class. An extreme example is Fortnite, pretty much all game actions are part of the third class. There are actually so many actions in this game that you might even run out of keyboard keys. If your favorite game still has time critical actions that you cannot assign to the keyboard anymore, then place those onto the mouse instead. Every mouse button basically also belongs to the third class, as you can press those while moving into any direction with your in-game character. So to summarize the guide, all you have to do now is to ask yourself what in-game actions you would assign to the second or third class and then bind it to one of the keys from the corresponding key class. Alternatively you can verify if your current key bindings match the different classes and their game actions. If you have any questions about this optimization guide, just ask in the comments down below. Guys, if you liked this video, hit the like button or even subscribe to this channel. And for the crazy guys out there, you can even become a channel member now, I'd really really appreciate that. Plus you also get some extra benefits by becoming a channel member. Also, let me know if you would like to see more of these tutorials in the comments down below. But that's about it for this video guys, thanks for watching and I will maybe see you in the next one.